Our next speaker is uh, Tom Tomas Chekvala, right. <laughs> uh, who is going to be talking about fast beta stocks, which is uh, an OPNFV project uh, related to the integration of VPP and other FDIO projects into a stack. Okay. So. Right. Uh, do you need to do? Do you still need to do your presentation? Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, hi everyone, uh, my name is Thomas. I work on uh, FDS. Uh, I contribute to this project, which uh, is based on software defined networking, or let's say uh, virtual network function. So, yeah, so what do we do? Um, so, uh, OPNFV, uh, Fast Data Stack, is a platform that allows you to use a very complex solution uh, where you can just define your business logic that you have or that you want to implement in your network. Uh, given the fact that you don't have to really care about how the devices are configured, uh, all you need to be aware or all you need to define is, is a, some kind of topology or policy or um, some kind of rules who can speak with who and how and you don't care don't need to care how it's how that is done in the <laughs> underlying network so uh opnv is a pretty complex suit um it's uh designed in a way that you can just install it and uh, you don't really need to go through the all the complicated installing of uh, multiple components that is used there uh, and once you have it then you can just you can just use it out of the box, let's say. So uh, in this picture, there's a very brief uh, description of how uh, when we decompose our problem, um, then we are operating uh, mostly on the network control forwarder, network controller layer, where our forwarders, routers, and switches, and we're trying to uh, manage them and configure them by some kind of automation that we use, that we implement in uh, components above. Um, then there's a virtual machine layer when we actually spin up a VMs in our suit. So you just need to tell, uh, I want a VM on that node. And then uh, all the suit, all the suit should uh, give you the node and you can use it right away. And there are also uh, services, one layer above that uh, takes care, let's say, about uh, um, managing, your, managing your nodes and uh, uh, running some services that are related to it. So let's say a metadata service that can inject some configuration to your node and other services. OK, so um, there's uh, open daylight. It's been discussed before. Uh, so we use that uh, for configuring uh, various uh, underlying network types. Uh, we currently work on uh, VPP. Uh, we also done some work on uh, OVS, and uh, also physical devices can be uh, also incorporated in our suit. So, uh, in when speaking about GBP, uh, GBP is a plugin in Open Daylight, and it's sort it's a, it's. A, it's a plugin that allows you to transform a policy into a network configuration of devices. So you take your logic, your business logic, use cases, and uh, GPP will transform it in a config. So, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, okay, this is uh, another view on our suit. So there are also layers, and um, uh, as you can see on, our, on the bottom, there are four orders, uh, OVS, OVS DPDK, which are uh, also in some suits available uh, as, a, as a use case. And in our use case, we add a VPP. So uh, our scenario is mostly uh, OpenStack uh, for controlling VMs and for uh, having an abstraction layer on the very, on the very top. Then there is uh, Open Daylight where we use a GBP for uh, receiving those requests from OpenStack and transforming them to uh, underlying network um, and also uh, hypervisors for uh, hosting the VMs, right? That's in the middle. And there are, then there are four others. So uh, 
We're currently trying to involve uh, VPP uh, as an uh, underlying technology. So there are also other scenarios that currently are in progress. Uh, the first one, which you see with Apex, OpenStack, OpenDevi, L2, uh, KV, and VPP, that's already what's uh, working uh, in our scenario. Uh, uh, then there is L3, which is in progress. So we're kind of kind of want to route traffic between the nodes uh, without uh, really touching the kernel space, but just uh, keeping the the routing in a user user space by using uh, DPDK. And there is also another scenario which is in progress, and that's uh, that OpenStack directly talks to VPP. Uh, it's just that it exists. We don't really work on it now, but someone else is. And um, yeah, here are some more details about our uh, our suit. So uh, OpenStack is on the top. Uh, neutral plugin, which is there, uh, it's a key component because it allows you to define uh, networks, subnets, uh, ports, security groups, and uh, all this abstraction that is pretty simple to define. Then there is a REST API. Uh, uh, so Neutron sends a REST request into GPP. There is a project Neutron Northbound that has a, a model. Uh, this is also model model driven uh, plugin. Uh, and uh, so so that's where the data are stored. And. Uh, Underneath, there is a GBP project which listens to this uh, data model and any and reacts on the changes in config data store, transforms uh, by using render manager, VPP render, all this policy into a configuration on FDIO. And uh, yeah, FDIO is actually um, it's a collection of projects that includes DPDK, VPP, and also Honeycomb. Honeycomb is like a light, lightweight ODL that uh, has uh, it's capable of network netconf communication between ODL and uh, it, and uh, Honeycomb. Yeah, so so as you can see, we use netconf there, and uh, because VPP doesn't have any um, any API that could be or that could be uh, directly used by ODL. Uh, Honeycomb actually transforms these network network uh, netconf requests into uh, and then uses a C API that is available on VPP. And so it's not that we directly configure VPP with uh, ODL, but we also use uh, Honeycomb for that. So given the fact uh, Honeycomb has to be on every node uh, together with VPP. And there is also a system installer, Apex, and uh, there are also system tests that are involved in OPNFV. So uh, Apex is actually the um, project that, or it's, it's a program that uh, installs all of this for you automatically. And bug tests uh, uh, ensure that everything's working as it should. So here's a detail uh, view on how, uh, let's say, when a port is created, how it goes down to the VPP from very top of Neutron in OpenStack. So uh, let's say we create a port with some binding details. Uh, those data are written into Neutron or bound in ODL. Then they are mapped to uh, a GBP policy because GBP is a standalone application. You can define any policy also in there. It doesn't have, doesn't need uh, OpenStack. It can work uh, on its own. So uh, uh, the matter of fact is that the abstraction that ca that comes from uh, OpenStack has to be transformed into one that is in the GBP plugin in uh, Open Daylight, and then. Uh, we have pre-distributed uh, rendering of uh, configuration on different nodes, different type of nodes. Uh, so we, if there is a VPP, uh, VPP node, then render manager will uh, 
will create a configuration for VPP renderer and uh, VPP renderer by using uh, topology manager or direct, directly, call, directly sending requests to Honeycomb can configure interfaces and bridge domains on, uh, on VPP. Uh, the topology manager component is uh, not a part of GBP. It's a standalone plugin and uh, it helps you create a full mesh topology based on uh, where do you create uh, bridge domains. So uh, if you have uh, bridge domains with the same ID on a different nodes, then the VPD project will create and configure VXLAN tunnels uh, between them in a full mesh. So you don't really need uh, it kind of helps you. And uh, VPP render, it configures interfaces on a VPP itself. So this is how it's currently, how it's currently done. Okay, uh, here's some, uh, here's a workflow, let's say, of uh, how OpenStack knows that some of its, some of the nodes or uh, one of the nodes is uh, VPP. Um, OpenStack doesn't have the knowledge about where is a VPP node or where is a OVS node unless we tell it directly or unless ODL tells it. Uh, there are features for periodically scanning into ODL data store uh, and looking for a configuration for a given node. So it's a job for, of ODL to uh, write a data for OpenStack into its, data, into its data store correctly so that OpenStack can uh, read those data and save the proper configuration for a given node into its uh, database. It's called Agent Database. Uh, it's a Neutron project. Uh, so whenever there is a config read uh, by networking ODL, uh, those data are parsed and they are saved in, in this agent database. And then later when you want to create a Nova instance uh, or deploy a VM on a given node, uh, then you, uh, before Nova actually creates it, it uh, looks into this uh, database, uh, looks for the configuration for a given node. Uh, if it finds that configuration, it uses that config and uh, and then we'll create a VHOS user interface right there on the corner. So, um, so Nova will create a VHOS user interface uh, in a server mode and uh, on the other way, uh, ODL will receive a notification that port should be created. Uh, uh, Network ODL is gonna tell it and then uh, GBP will uh, configure an interface uh, on a VPP, uh, VOS user interface, but in a, in a client mode. So uh, when, the, when, uh, when the VPP detects the socket file uh, on, on a VM uh, and uh, opens it, then the VM is successfully bound <coughs> to the v, to VPP. Okay, so here we have a L2 scenario that we currently support. So uh, as you can see, there are bridge domains on every node. Uh, we have a same bridge domain ID on these three nodes. So VPD project uh, configures VXLAN tunnels between them for us. And uh, because, it's, because it's L2 scenario, uh, which means that ODL doesn't route packets, it only off switches them or forwards them uh, through the tunnels. Then uh, we use QRouter, which is an OpenStack component for routing the traffic. So all we need to do here is uh, to have a some, some kind of centralized node where we create the tab interfaces and they will connect to the QRouter or let's say QRouter will text them into its namespace and uh, whenever, uh, whenever there is traffic going from bridge domain to a different bridge domain, it has to go through the uh, QRouter. The next scenario is uh, L3 scenario, where we uh, do the routing by using uh, 
GPP, Open Daylight. So uh, there's no need for having a Q router anymore. All we do is to uh, configure routing on a VPP. So what does it mean? Um, it means that uh, you need to specify a VRF, uh, whether you would like to forward the packets or route the packets. And uh, into every bridge domain, you need to assign a BVI interface. So it's like an interconnection between a bridge domain and VRF. That's what BVI interface does. It's a L2 type of interface. And uh, the third scenario uh, I was talking about that, uh, that lacks GBP or ODL uh, entirely. Uh, it's uh, shown here. So uh, there has to be an agent on every node, uh, which is actually managed by OpenStack. And uh, OpenStack directly talks to VPP and configures, configures it with uh, CAPI. OK, and now uh, there's a, here's a simple cookbook for how to uh, create, the, you know, create a VM. So, uh, what you need to do is to get an image, uh, as shown there, and then uh, you know, by uh, turning on huge pages and uh, using the correct flavor, uh, you can then create, create a VM out of that. Um, there are also commands for creating a network, network uh, router, bridge uh, subnets and ports. And then Nova Boot will uh, spin up the VM and VPP will ensure that, or GBP will ensure that it's going to be uh, connected to the VPP. OK, so here are some outputs uh, of such a demo, but uh, let me show you a brief video. That we could, that we pre-recorded. Okay. Okay. Let me stop it for a while. Um, so uh, this is pretty complicated scenario that we're currently trying to work with. Uh, as you can see, there's a the excellent tunnel, uh, the green highlighted with the green color and for which uh, we would like to do some performance testing. So we are currently about to test some performance. Um, uh, but in this video, we are just doing uh, switching between the green bridge domains on one, uh, between those two nodes. So, okay, it should be running. Okay, so uh, here you can see uh, interfaces on VPP. That's a command line output. Um, so for VX on tunnels, uh, we need the IP address so that we, so that they can uh, reach each other. Okay, uh, then we install or we start Caraf and. Uh, there's a grab command for seeing whether uh, there was a connection between the nodes, the remote nodes, and the uh, and the controller. Okay, so well, this is probably another node. Uh, IP address of another interface. So these two are going to be uh, used as VXLAN tunnels. Okay, and now we are starting to create some abstraction with OpenStack. Uh, there's a service listing. So. services that Nova uses and services that uh, Neutron uses. Uh, as you can see, we have L2 agent enabled, but we, we're, do, we're not gonna, we would use it if we would uh, try to ping to the external networks uh, because 
there has to be some routing done. So we put a BVI interface in a bridge domain and then into external network, and then we could uh, we could uh, go outside. But in this video, we still stay inside. So. Um, as you can see, there's a metadata agent which uh, injects some configuration into VMs and also DHCP agent that uh, that runs the DHCP, DHCP service on a control node so that we can observe an IP address. Okay, there's a network that's been created. A subnet. So this is a network. Here we have uh, networks, uh, external and the one we created, and also subnets, external and the one that we created. Router comes handy, uh, but we're not going to route here. And now we create the ports, which is actually on a kind of abstraction. It's unbound yet. It's going to be bound when the, we create a VM. So it's going to be, uh, we, we binding details will be, will be filled after Nova successfully creates uh, a Nova instance. Okay, so here is a comment for uh, creating a, yeah, now you don't see anything. Okay, so. Now we try to spin up a VM. There's first. And VM on a second node. As you can see, availability zone uh, defines the node on which the VM should be created. And this is Horizon, uh, OpenStack interface for uh, managing, uh, managing entities that were created. So we're going to log in there and look for VMs we created. So they are booted. All right, they have, uh, there's a if config. So there was an IP address, which means that DHCP could assign IP address through the bridge domain. And there's another one. There's also gonna be an if config. And now some traffic. So now we're pinging Q router. Uh, which means that VPP created a BVI interface in the bridge domain. Now we're pinging DHCP, which should work. And now the other VM. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. That would be everything from my side. Uh, there's pretty much time for questions, if any are. So, if not, thanks again.